Welcome to another video lesson from the Jelly Roll Club. Hey quilty friends, today we're going to be making a cute sunflower pin cushion. So let's get started. In order to make this project, you need an eighth of a yard of yellow quilting cotton, a six and a half inch of fabric for the center, I chose brown, heavy duty thread, brown or black for basting. You need yellow quilting thread for the leaves, a quarter yard of Peltex 71F from Pellon. I used a large handful of polyfill fiber fill for my center. And on my sewing machine, I will add a 9014 top stitching needle. Hey, while you're here, don't forget to hit the thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so we can provide you with more free content. One of my favorite materials for creating templates are these inexpensive see-through cutting mats from the Dollar Tree. For a dollar you get a couple of these and they make great uh, template plastic. They're very sturdy and they're see-through so you don't need a light box whenever you're making your templates. Don't worry about being too fussy, just try to get your circles as close as you can, but don't worry about making them super perfect or super fussy. This is just a relaxing project. I just try to make sure that they're round. So I use a Sharpie and I rough cut around my shapes and then I label them so that if I wanna reuse this template again, I always save them in a little plastic baggie along with my pattern that way if I want to come back and make a few more of these, I always have them. I couldn't find a pattern that I wanted for a sunflower pin cushion, so like I often do, I just made my own pattern and played with a little bit of fabric. I encourage you to use this pattern to make not just a sunflower, but perhaps other types of flowers as well. Once I've traced and I check that my patterns are the correct size, then I'm ready to begin the next step. I used 100% cotton fabric that has not been starched but has been washed. I give it a quick press. The reason I don't want to starch this fabric is because I want it to be nice and soft for when I do the next step, which involves tracing the template with a pencil. Then I just rough cut around the template. I leave a little bit extra, like a quarter of an inch. It doesn't have to be exact. Once I finished cutting my center, I just give it a quick little trim just to reduce the bulk of that excess fabric. Like I said, you don't have to be perfect. Once you have that fabric center, then you are ready for the next step. Okay friends, now we're ready for the next step. We're going to grab some of that Peltex 70, which is a non-fusible, heavyweight type of interfacing. It's often used for bags and for giving uh, things structure like placemats. So it's, it's quite heavy, so it's not like normal interfacing. But it has uh, no glue. This one has no glue at all. You're gonna find that some Peltex has glue on one side and glue on both sides, but this particular type does not have any glue at all. And so I'm just gonna grab a pen, if I can find one that works, right? And I'm gonna trace around my petal and base template. Again, it doesn't have to be super exact, just getting it really close and I'm gonna trace and cut out a total of three 
So I need three of the petals and base. There you have it. Once you have your three pieces of Peltex made with a smaller circle, you're gonna to wanna to cut a total of 13 three and a half inch squares of the color that you're gonna use for your flower petals. You're gonna grab some of that heavy duty basting thread and following that line that you drew on the wrong side of the fabric, you're gonna run basting stitches all the way around the circle of the flower center, so the large circle. Although hand sewing is not one of my favorite things, I don't mind basting. I find this step quite relaxing. And so it should only take you a couple of minutes to just run some pretty decent sized basting stitches. They don't have to be little and small because you're gonna be using that stitch to gather that flower center around your base. So once you get to the end, you're gonna just leave two loose tails because you're gonna use that to create what looks like a little bonnet, like a little shower cap. Take one of the bases, tuck that inside, and you're gonna pull that tight around the center. And that's why you use heavy duty thread. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a press just so that I can flatten it out and shape it. Don't use a very hot iron because Peltex can melt just a little bit. So I tested it out to make sure that my iron wasn't too hot, but I will use one of those centers and then I will have to cut, find the middle, and I will have to cut with a very sharp scissor. So I just kind of mark the center, I score it, and then I pull it out and I cut an X in the center because I'm gonna use that X to have a way of stuffing the middle of my flower, my sunflower. So I just tuck it back in, give it a nice hard tug, and you're gonna stuff a little bit of Pellon in there, not a lot, just a small amount. You're gonna stuff more later, but you're gonna stuff just a tiny bit in there, make sure that you have enough just to check to see how much slack you're gonna need. I cut my needle away, and now I'm gonna clip using my little wonder clips all the way around to hold that flower center in place before I get to the next step. So make sure you have a little bit of slack, not too tight, and that just distributes the fabric evenly all the way around. And now you're ready to do a little bit of stuffing. So using that little hole we created and a chopstick, you're gonna grab some of the stuffing and you're gonna put it in the middle. Like I said, don't stuff it tight just yet because we still have some sewing to do and so we're gonna stuff it even more in a later step. So just partially stuff it right now. Pull those back, the clips, to give it a little bit of slack. And check with your finger to see how much more stuffing you're gonna need. I like to kind of push it around. And now I'm going to my sewing machine using my quarter inch foot. I'm gonna tighten it just slightly I'm going to distribute the fabric evenly and then using my quarter inch foot I'm going to sew big basting stitches by machine. So I use a 3.5 stitch length and I did 
big large basting stitches all the way around that flower center to secure that fabric to the Peltex before I can move on to the next step. You may have to lift your presser foot from time to time and adjust it to make sure that you don't get any tucks or any puckers and that your sewing is smooth. You're going to sew all the way around. Like I said, you may need to stop occasionally and adjust it. And just check that it's nice and smooth. Once you've sewn all the way around, inspect your work. I had a spot where it looked like it was wanting to pucker on me, so I had to stop and adjust it a little bit. So just take your time. There's no rush. This is just a quick, relaxing project. Once I had my center complete, I was ready for my next step. And I just cut some of my loose strings so that they didn't get in the way for my next step. If you want to, you can trim the excess fabric at this time, but it's not necessary. Okay friends, now we're ready for the next part, which is building the rest of your flower. I'm going to distribute the stuffing evenly in the middle, and then using some yellow thread that matches my petals. If you were doing flower petals of different colors, you would just want to match your thread. I'm going to take my 13 squares, which are three and a half inches, and I'm going to fold them in half in two directions and make a little square. On the open side of the square, I'm going to trace using the little uh, petal template that I created and I'm going to cut a little curve. Now this is on the open side, not the closed side. And I'm going to cut off the fabric. And so what that will do is that will form a circle. And it doesn't have to be a perfect circle. Like I said, you're going to fold it in half. And you're going to fold it in half again. Because we're going to be using these for the flower petals. So I just find it convenient to use the little template I created for my petals to make that little curve. And then I use my scissor to just cut around to make a very rough circle. I just clip them together and make a little stack. And I continue doing that until all 13 of my petals have been folded and trimmed. forget the folded center goes to the inside and the open parts of your square are to the outside of that curve. So 13 by three and a half inches. If you wanted your flower petals to be larger, you could make, certainly make them larger, but I'm just making these three and a half inches. And once you get your little circles, all cut out and complete. Then you're going to flip the right sides out and you're going to refold them into fourths, just like that. Once you have all 13 done, then you're going to start the basting process. I use a double thick thread, so I used to double my thread. 
and I made a knot and I'm going to start on the rounded edge of my circles that have been folded into fourths and I'm going to start basting along the curved area about a fourth of an inch away from the edge. These basting stitches are not really, really small, but they're also not huge. So I just kind of take my fabric in between my fingers. I rock it back and forth and put about seven to 10 stitches in that flower. You're gonna baste every one of your flower petals exactly the same way, running those seven to 10 basting stitches along the curved edge. You're going to continue basting every one of your flower petals. You're just going to pull them not too tight and then you're going to baste the very next petal right on the same string. Do not break your thread. You want to keep one long continuous piece of thread with all of your petals basted right on the same string kind of like a long string of lights. So just keep using that little rocking stitch, seven to 10 basting stitches on every petal, sewing a quarter of an inch away from that curved edge. And that's what gives every one of your little petals a shape. You can see how they're gonna fit against that center and they're gonna curl up slightly. So you're just gonna keep doing that until you have enough petals to go all the way around. If you wanted your petals to be a little bit tighter, you could certainly add a 14th petal instead of 13, or maybe you're just superstitious and you don't want 13. You can add a number 14 and just uh, tighten those stitches up so that they're a little bit tighter. But 13 is the number that I used. I found that that gave the petals the shape that I wanted, not too tight, not too loose. Sunflowers are my absolute favorite flower. Um, they were brought first to Europe from the Americas during the 16th century. And flowers are the symbol of happiness, optimism, the sunflower is also the universal symbol of joy and sunshine. So I hope as you make this project that you will consider making a second sunflower and sharing it with a friend. I call it sharing the sunshine. All right, continue basting all of those little petals of sunshine. This pattern is actually quick and easy. It's more complicated than what it looks like. Once you make the first one, it's almost like potato chips. You're gonna to wanna to keep going and making a few more. I'm actually thinking of making a little thread catcher to go with this one. So if you think that I should make a pattern for a thread catcher, just leave a comment down below and tell me. Also, if there are other ideas that you have for quilty projects, share those with me as well in the comments. I love making new things, I love experimenting, and I love spreading sunshine. All right, quilty friends, we're almost at the end. I'm gonna put a needle on each end of my string of petals, and I'm gonna tie off the first one on the back side of the base, so I'm just going to make a knot and secure it. And then I'm going to pull that needle off. I'm just going to make sure that it's secure. I'm going to pin that first petal right in place so that it doesn't move. And then I will begin distributing the fullness of all of those flower petals all the way around my flower center. So you want to kind of distribute those evenly so that your flower petals are going all the way around. I use a wool mat for this process, so I will tighten up my petals, 
place them just where I want. Making sure that I have enough petals to go all the way around. And then I will tighten them up and keep adjusting them. This is going to take you a few minutes. And then I will pin them in place using my wool mat. This is one of the many reasons I love using my wool mat. So push those pins straight down through the wool mat and keep adjusting your flower petals until they're evenly distributed all the way around. I tighten them up as necessary using that basting string and then I just keep pushing them down, shaping every one of my petals And then I will put pins all the way around to secure my petals in place. Once I've placed all those pins all the way around, I can continue adjusting and just give it a look. If it looks pretty good to you, then we're ready to move on to the next step. I'm gonna glue baste mine with a tiny bit of undiluted Elmer's glue, just a few drops, about every other petal. Don't put an excessive amount of glue. Just squirt it right between the petals and the base. And then I'll push it down to make sure that that glue is making contact. And then I will allow this to dry for a few hours before I move to the next step. Once the glue has dried, I will grab my two bottoms and I will center them across the bottom of the sunflower and I will put two pins on opposite sides of my sunflower just to kind of hold them in place so they don't shift around. I will take them to my sewing machine. I used my open toe foot to sew this particular project so I removed my quarter inch foot and I use that big open toe foot. And then I adjusted my sewing machine and I used a blind hem stitch with a 5.5 width and a 2.5 stitch length. And so I used that blind hem stitch all the way around the outer edge to secure the back and the front and my petals and there you have it friends once you've stitched that blind stitch all the way around you're ready to go you're ready to share your sunflower with a friend I hope you enjoyed this lesson from the Jelly Roll Club don't forget to like and subscribe and share our channel with your friends thank you